Hi everyone, I'm Maria McLachlan. Recently I watched a video by self-identified skeptic Rebecca Watson entitled What the Science Says About Trans Teens on Puberty Blockers and it was appalling. There is so much in it I would like to comment on that I expect this will run into two or three parts. We'll see how I get on. Last month, Ken Paxton, the current Attorney General of Texas, published a non-binding opinion that parents who provide their transgender kids with science-based medical care should be investigated for child abuse. Transgender kids? What are they? I feel like I've already said this a million times. When talking about anything to do with gender ideology, or any other controversial topic for that matter, it's important to be clear about what you mean. Does Rebecca agree with Jazz Jennings, who said this? I would say that I have a girl brain and boy body, and I think like a girl, but I, but I just have a boy body. So does Rebecca think that there are girl brains and boy brains and it's possible for a girl brain to somehow find its way into a boy's body? Because that's not science, that's bollocks. Undoubtedly, some children are deeply unhappy with their sex, their sexed bodies and or the expectations placed upon them because they are the sex they are. And sometimes, though not always, the reasons for their unhappiness are obscure. As an example of a child whose unhappiness with his sex is not particularly obscure, I would point to Kai Shapley, whose mother said this. I remember even thinking before Kai was three that I think this kid might be gay. And I thought that that could not happen. And that would not happen. We can only speculate how Kai would have felt if his parents didn't make it so damn obvious how they expected him as a boy to be. If only they'd loved him unconditionally for who he is. Even though Kai and Jazz may have been happier when their parents decided they were girls, it's unreasonable and irresponsible to say that those children are transgender, because transgender is a purely ideological concept that has nothing to do with science. By using the term transgender kids without any explanation or qualification, Rebecca reveals that she buys into the ideology. Now, there may be something in her great volume of work, her YouTube videos, in which she explains why she believes it, though personally, I've only ever seen her offer this argument. Hello, the word women is right there in trans women. Idiotic. Note that Rebecca uses the phrase science-based medical care. Use of the term science-based medicine was first advocated, must be about a decade ago now, by anti-quackery campaigners as an improvement on the more traditionally used evidence-based medicine. It was felt necessary to emphasize that some treatments like antibiotics and procedures like vaccination are based on established science and arrived at through the scientific method and are therefore at least plausible. Whether they actually work or not is established through clinical trials and other forms of evidence gathering. Whereas something like homeopathy is not science-based. Most of the so-called remedies contain no active ingredients. It is therefore implausible and can only ever achieve a placebo effect in placebo responsive conditions as an excessive number of clinical trials have shown. That is why amongst those who call themselves skeptics, the phrase science-based medicine or medical care has a positive connotation. And that's why Rebecca used it when uh, this Ken Paxton guy, the Texas Attorney General did not. The words he used were certain medical 
and chemical procedures, which are neutral terms. There is nothing to suggest that Paxton doesn't believe that these procedures are not science-based. On the contrary, it's because they have a very powerful effect that concerns are being raised about their use in adolescence. He specifies a long list of surgical procedures as well as puberty blocking drugs and wrong sex hormones. Here's Rebecca. Let's take those things in order. Surgeries do sound like a big deal. Uh, maybe we should restrict teenagers from getting elective surgery that might be difficult or maybe even impossible to reverse later, right? Yes, of course you should. A girl who has her breasts amputated will never be able to nurse an infant. In your teens, you may have 25 childbearing years ahead of you. How can a girl that young possibly know, possibly be sure that she won't ever want to do that? As for a boy losing his penis... Let's cut it out! Yeah. Well, this is indeed irreversible. And what's the hurry? Most men, even the most feminized, hang on to theirs. Of course, we should restrict teens getting irreversible surgeries on their healthy bodies. Well, it turns out we already do that. Uh, current medical guidelines, by and large, suggest... Medical guidelines. Guidelines, not laws. Guidelines, by and large, suggest what? that teens wait until they're 18, aka legal adults, to have procedures done like genital or chest surgeries. Hello, a person of 18 is still a teen. See how that works? Rarely teens as young as 16 have been evaluated and found to be sh of sure enough mind to have surgery. Okay, check this. Not having breasts anymore is really difficult. I don't feel like myself. I don't feel comfortable. I never want to be seen by anyone or go anywhere. I know not having breasts doesn't make me any less of a woman, but a literal body part was removed from me before I was old enough. This American woman, now aged 22 and detransitioned, was 16 when she had her double mastectomy. I wonder if she was evaluated and found to be of sure enough mind. So we can dismiss that as something that doesn't really happen. Wow! Anyone who thought this woman was justified in calling herself a skeptic must surely be disabused by now. Who could be such a mug as to think that just because medical guidelines by and large suggest something, that everyone follows the guidelines? Would it have hurt to do a bit of research, Rebecca? If she had, she would have undoubtedly come across Johanna Olson Kennedy's paper published in 2018, whose purpose was to compare chest dysphoria in young women who've had double mastectomies with some who haven't. The study starts off with 92 eligible post-operative young women. 26 dropped out for whatever reason. They didn't complete the survey, leaving 68 participants. And this chart shows the ages of them. All these are physically healthy girls and young women who had double mastectomies because they wanted to be boys. As you can see, two were 13 years old, five were 14, nine were 15, nearly half of them were under 18, and if we include the 18 and 19 year olds, that's 80% who were still in their teens. And it gets worse, actually. Gender therapist Kellen Lacard of the Kaiser Permanente Healthcare Organization in California admits that her colleagues have removed tissue from the healthy growing breast of a confused 12-year-old girl. Uh, in terms of masculinizing top surgery, I think 12 is the youngest who's had surgery through our program. Kaiser Permanente surgeons have also created pseudo-vaginas from the genitals of 16-year-old boys. How is this okay? It just isn't.
So to dismiss it as something that doesn't really happen is a big fail of your supposed scepticism, Rebecca. I'll comment on what she says about puberty blockers next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.